The Bible says, And I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony they held. And they cried out with a loud voice, O Sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long until you judge and avenge our blood upon those who dwell on the earth? And they were given white robes and told to rest a little while longer until their fellow servants and brethren should be slain as they had been slain. The Bible says this in Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 and following. After the sixth seal was opened, he saw, the old, the, saw under the altar the martyrs of the faith. The word martyr means an eyewitness. My friends, these covenanters sealed their testimony with their blood. Why did the covenanters die, sir? Do you know why, sir? Because they believed the Bible. They believed Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died and rose from the dead to forgive sinners. So no matter how drunk you get, the Lord Jesus, He can forgive you and make you sober. The Lord Jesus can give you a sound mind. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. A mind that corresponds with reality. If you think a man can identify as a woman, your mind does not correspond with reality. But you can sit at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in your right mind. You can sit at the nail-pierced feet of Jesus, clothed and in your right mind. I see so many people these days, they're walking around with no clothes, even young ladies walking around scantily clad, immodestly dressed, barely dressed, immodest, and they're not in their right mind. So many of you, I see so many of us sadly become drunk or get high. So many people do not have a sober mind, a mind that corresponds with reality, a sound mind. The Bible says that God has given us a spirit of power and love and a sound mind, not a spirit of fear. See, the Bible says in 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love, for, for fear has to do with punishment. Fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love, we love. We love because He first loved us. My dear friends, these covenanters, they died. They loved God because God first loved them. And how did God demonstrate his love for us? In that Christ died for sinners, Jesus Christ. He gave his life's blood. This the greatest act of love is giving your life, paying the ultimate price. Jesus Christ gave his life's blood to forgive sinners. For Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Now these covenanters, my dear friends, their blood cannot wash away sin. They died as an example for us, to teach us. But my, it's only the blood of Jesus that has the power to forgive sin. What's that? Come on, let's talk. Let's talk. Don't, don't run away. Let's talk. If you want to talk, face me. Let's talk as civilized human beings. We love you enough to tell you the truth today. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you're a slave to alcohol, if you're a slave to drugs, if you're a slave to sexual deviancy, the Lord Jesus can break those chains, and he can make you a free man. He can make you a decent human being. The Lord Jesus Christ died to save sinners. Have you ever read the Bible, young man? Turn off the TV and open the Bible. Turn off the video game and open the Bible. The Bible, my dear friends, is the roadmap to heaven. Please don't lose your soul, young man. The Bible says, how does a young man keep his way pure? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Thy word, David said, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. The Lord God saved me as a 12-year-old boy and he filled me with his spirit. All who believe upon him have his spirit dwelling in their hearts. And we love the word of God. Do you love the Bible? Simple question. Or is the preaching of the Bible like white noise? Like, does the preaching of the Bible just disturb you? When someone preaches about Jesus, does it agitate you? This is a litmus test 
to whether or not you're in the faith. If you hear someone preaching about Jesus Christ, who died and rose again to save sinners, is it music to your ear? Shalom, man. I kneel heavy, Israel. You speak Evrit? Evrit? You speak Hebrew? Right, okay. My friends, is the preaching of the Bible a sweet melody to your ears? Or is it... Are you on the same frequency with the Holy Spirit? Are you on the same wavelength with God's Word? Or, my friends, does the preaching of the Bible seem antiquated, irrelevant, outmoded, and outdated to you? Do you consider the Bible as anachronistic? Anachronistic is how you say it correctly, at least in American English. Do you believe that the Bible is an anachronism? Do you believe that these cathedrals and beautiful edifices are simply vestiges of a long gone, long dead faith? No, my friends. The Spirit of Jesus Christ is still here. The Spirit of God is still in this world. And the Spirit and the Bride of Christ say, Come, whoever is thirsty, if you're thirsty, don't go to your nearest pub and your nearest tavern, but come to Jesus Christ. Why do you spend yourself for that which does not satisfy? Why do you spend yourself for that which is not bread? But Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. See, Solomon said, whoever loves silver will not be satisfied with silver. But blessed are those, Jesus said, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. See, if you try to get more money to feel satisfied, it's like drinking salt water. What happens if you try to quench your thirst with seawater? You kill yourself with the very thirst you're trying to quench. My friends, Israel had committed two sins. They had forsaken it. Jesus Christ, they had forsaken their God, the fountain of living waters, and they had hewn out cisterns which can hold no water. My friends, come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the fountain of life. He is, my dear friends, He is the giver of life. The Lord Jesus Christ spilled His blood. His blood is a fountain. His blood, that is, is living water. The wounds in his side, the wounds in his hands, the wounds in his feet. He did not deserve to die. As, as, as wonderful and as great as the covenanters were, they were just men like you and I are men. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he was not only a man. No, he is God in the flesh. And he spilled his blood. He spilled his blood. You know, Jesus didn't have to die. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted in every point, like we are tempted yet without sin. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but Jesus did no sin. So then why did he die? He died out of love for his church, out of love for his people. Are you a member of his kirk? Are you a member of Christ's kirk? Are you a member of his people? Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus today and be washed clean. Be forgiven of your sin. There is no other name given under heaven. Not Muhammad, not the Hindu gods, not the Buddha who's dead. I was in Israel last month and the tomb is empty, folks. The tomb is empty. Jesus Christ is alive. He's alive, young man. He's alive. Don't drink yourself to hell. Don't drink yourself to hell. Drink in moderation, my friends, but be sober, the Bible says, and vigilant. Do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Word of God says be filled with the Holy Spirit, not with wine and spirits. Don't be drunk, my friends. Be sober. Your life is in the balance between heaven and hell, and Jesus Christ makes the difference. My dear friends, these men died for their faith. Would you die for Jesus Christ? The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. The Bible declares this. Now many of you are thinking, this is disrespectful. I am morally outraged that you would dishonor this monument. Yet this land celebrates LGBTQ plus perversion. 
which is a complete disgrace to what these saints died in honor of. The Bible says, I'm going to read you the Bible. You now these people here, these the men who were, some of them were hung here. They were killed here. The Covenanters, the Scottish Covenanters died on this spot. They were executed as enemies of the state. Public enemy number one was a truth speaker. Sound familiar? Public enemy number one. You know what Jesus said in John 7:7? 7, 7? The world hates me because I testify about it that its works are evil. I'm going to read to you from John chapter 4, though. In John chapter 4, Jesus said to the, the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman at the well, he says in John chapter 4, verse 20, the, the woman at the well says, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. For we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You say this is a holy monument. You might be thinking that this is a sacred stone, but the Bible declares, my friends, that God is looking for spiritual worshipers to worship him in truth. If you think that this stone or this monument is more holy than that place over there or that place over there, you misunderstand the nature of God and the nature of spirit. God, my friends, is a spirit. God is holy, 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 the Bible says. The whole earth is full of His glory. And our civilization, Western civilization, tramples and disrespects what these men have died for. It is now prevailing thought, right, to think that we have evolved from primates. Do you think that you are an evolved primate? Do you think that there is no God? then you, my friends, not us, disrespect the memory of those who died here. It is utterly disrespectful to the Covenanters to be an atheist. To be an atheist is to think that these men died in vain. To think a man can identify as a woman, or a man can marry a man, or a woman can marry a woman, is to dishonor the sacrifice of these saints. Wake up, my friends. The emperor has no clothes on. The emperor has no clothes on, my friends. Do you understand the irony of this? Many of you are thinking that we are disrespecting the memory of the covenanters by standing here and proclaiming what the Bible actually says. But we live in a post-Christian United Kingdom. We are in a post-Christian United Kingdom. Are you an atheist, sir? Amen. Very good. Please, please have the faith of the covenanters. Have the faith of your spiritual forebears. The faith of these saints who died here. These men gave their life. They spilled their blood to make Scotland great. To make this land great. To refuse popish superstition and Romish theology. My friends, these men gave their life. Why? The Bible says in John 15 verse 13, that there is no greater love than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus did. These men and women and these, these matrons and maids and these, this army of men and women and, and children who believe the gospel, many of them, they gave their lives here. Why? They had love in their hearts. You say love is love. What does love is love mean? People think that lust is love today. But these men know what real love is. These know that love is giving until it bleeds. Love is sacrificial giving. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, In this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and gave His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. This is what love is. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. And the Scottish covenanters, they took that seriously. For them it wasn't simply a nice thought. My friends, the Christian faith made your country great. 
Is there nothing sacrosanct any longer in this land? Is marriage no longer sacrosanct? The churches are being turned into museums and the Christian faith is being disrespected with the LGBTQ plus garbage, with atheism and foolishness, my friends. You, if you think there is no God, if you think a man can identify as a woman, you are the person who is disrespecting this memory, the memory of the dead here. You, my friends, think about this. Think, think, my friends, this is a rock. But the, these men died preaching the Bible and believing the Bible. There's nothing more honoring to them than to follow in their steps. The greatest form of flattery is imitation, once, someone once said. The greatest form of flattery is imitation. Why did the Covenanters die here? Why, why is there a monument here? Because men died for what they believed in. And it wasn't merely some vague idea. No, they believed the Bible. They believed in the exposition of the Scripture. They believed that a man has the right to interpret the Scripture for himself without the shackles of Romish tyranny. They believed that the Pope is not the head of the church, nor the vicar of Christ. And these men gave their blood defying spiritual tyranny, spiritual oppression. That's why we have a monument here. Not to come kiss the rock and lay on the rock and think that the memory of the dead will somehow sanctify us, that the treasury of merit of the dead saints will somehow sanctify us. My dear friends, the Bible says, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Do you want to be really holy? Do you really want to feel God's presence? You don't need to kiss a rock. You need to open the Bible. Read it, believe it, and repent. The Bible says that we are sanctified by His Word. The hour is coming, Jesus said, when you will neither worship in Jerusalem nor in this mountain. There's nothing holy about this rock. This is a rock. It's a dead rock. The, the, what is holy is Jesus Christ who lived in these men, who lived in their souls, who lived in their hearts, and these men died for what they believed in. You know, a, a wise man once said, a man who's not willing to die for something is not fit to live. Are you willing to die for Jesus Christ like the Scottish Covenanters? Are you willing to die? You say, oh, you're disrespectful to the monument. You're dishonoring the memory. Really? Do you think that there is no God? Don't you know that atheism is popular now in Scotland? Don't you know that transgenderism and homosexuality, what the Bible calls sodomy, that's what's popular today? That's disrespectful to the memory of the dead covenanters. Have you ever read the Bible, folks? Do you know what this monument, what's that? Have you ever read the Bible, sir? You should read the Bible. You know why? Because the Bible stands for basic instructions before life ends. Young man, young man, you're gonna die one day and you need instructions, you need a, if you wanna go to Edinburgh, if you wanna go to Glasgow, you need a, a map, right? Well, how do you get to heaven, young man? How do you get to heaven? You need a map. Well, the Bible is a roadmap to heaven, sir. The Bible, this is God's word. Anybody